Hi there, and thanks so much for stopping by for another video. I'm Erin Eno, and today I'm going to be showing you my tips for painting loose watercolor roses. I'm going to show you um, how to correct some issues you may be having and just give you a few tips to make painting the loose rose just a little easier and hopefully this will help you out. If you enjoy this video and you want to see more like it, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos out. So let's just jump in and get at these roses. So today I'm using my Bao Hong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I'm using my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints. I have a jar of water and a paper towel and I will be using my Princeton Neptune in a size 8 round. So almost a year ago I did a video tutorial on how to paint loose watercolor roses four different ways. You may or may not have seen this. If you want to see it, I will pop this up at the end of this video. I will also put the link for it in the description box for you. But I just thought uh, enough time had passed that I thought it was maybe a good idea to address some issues that people may be having with their watercolor roses. If they're still struggling and they're just not happy with them but just can't quite figure out why. So I don't really want to say that these are mistakes. That people are making. Um, I just want to point out some things that I see that maybe that's what you don't like about your roses. Okay, maybe some of the things I do here are exactly how you want your roses to be, and that's fine too. There's no rules in art. It's all subjective, um, unless of course you paint the perfect daisy and try to call it a rose. That you might, you know, get questioned on. But anyway, so we're going to address a few things that I see that could possibly be bothering you with uh, your roses. So I've got a mixture of quinacridone rose here, and it's quite bright, um, quite a bright, quite a bright pink. And I find that when I um, go in to add shadows and add more, um, more pigment to it, to my paintings, that it just keeps getting brighter rather than um, darker. So I've added a bit of oxide red, uh, light oxide red, just to kind of tone it down so it's not such a bright pink. And I'm just putting a little bit of a wash in this well, just so I don't have to keep cleaning my brush off, okay? So one of the problems I see, now if you've watched a lot of Rose videos, you're, you know, you're told to, I'm just going to put this here so I don't muck my paper up. It always starts with a little squiggle, you know, in the center for the rose, just some little squiggles. I always hold my brush upright so you're only using the point of your brush, you're not using the belly of your brush. Then you go in and you start putting C curves around it, okay? So you just keep building on these C curves until you get the rose that you like. So you might wanna just practice doing some C curves Okay, so you just start with the tip and then press down and just do a curve and then pick your brush back up, just like that. Okay, and you can do some shorter ones, some fatter ones, some longer ones, just to kind of get the hang of that. So one of the things I see a lot of that you may be doing and you may not like is going in with too much water and overworking it. Maybe too much water, not enough white space. And I'll show you what, what, what happens when you do that. Because I, I do see a lot of this. Um, so you've got the center of your rose. You go in, you dip your brush off in your water, and you put a C curve in there. And you go in with more water, and you do another C curve. And another one. Okay, and you touch the previous C curves in a couple spots just to make them you know, kind of natural looking. Okay, so you're doing this and you just keep building it like that. Okay. And then you can go in, go back to your pigment, go back to your pigment and tap some in the center to deepen it up. Okay, and it doesn't look bad. And you think, hey, that's not a bad rose. 
but because it's so wet and the petals are so close together, you're putting your pigment in and what happens is the paper's wet, okay? So you think it looks good because you've got that depth that you want, but what happens is that continues to bleed out and you just get a blob of a flower because it all kind of just merges together. I can go in even just some even darker pigment. Okay, and you lose the definition between those petals. So you'll see the longer it sits, the more that's just gonna kind of blend out and turn into like just a mush of pink. Okay, so that might be something that's bothering you about your roses. The other thing is to combat that, you may be going in, doing your little swiggles for the center of your rose, going in, doing your C curve, okay, and another C curve, and another one. Then you're gonna go and add your second row of C curves, So you see you're doing them further apart because you don't want them to all kind of blend together. But what happens is it just starts to disconnect. Okay, your petals are just kind of all floating on their own. And your eye doesn't really pull that together as a decent rose. Okay, maybe you want that kind of graphic style and that's cool too. But I just wanted to show you what might be an issue that you're dealing with. You can see how this is all starting to mush together now. Even the center is kind of disintegrated into just a flat blob of pink. So those are two examples. Too close together, too much water, and too far apart. Too much white space, not enough white space. Okay, now another issue I see often is People will take that term C curve and just take it so literally that they'll do their little squiggles. So you have to watch how you do your C curves, okay? So you've got your C curve, okay? And I'm gonna put them close together so there's not too much white space and another C curve and another C curve, okay? That's a pretty decent start to a rose, okay? Then we're gonna do another C curve, series of C curves around this one. Maybe another row, and you just keep going. But you see, by just see, no pun intended, you can see by just doing that very strict literal C curve, you're getting a very rounded, um, not very natural looking rose, okay? So to combat that, you wanna change the shapes of your C curves, okay? They don't always have to be perfect. I, I always kind of notice when once a rose kind of blooms and the leaves are, just getting maybe a little more mature, they will start to curl and often leave like a kind of a pointier edge to them. Okay, so you're looking at a C curve more like that. Okay, so it's it's got a little bit of a pointier outside edge on it. Okay, now you don't want to do that to all your petals, but it's just to show you that you need to change the shape and the variation of them, okay? And you can even just try to do a C curve and just kind of swig a little bit as you do it, you know, just so it's not a perfect, really uh, defined C shape, okay? So we'll start and do another rose and kind of fix that issue, okay? So we'll start with our swiggles
There you go. And we'll do a C curve. I always do the ones right in the very center. Pretty, um, pretty C-shaped. Okay, but you do lift it up on the end so you get like a sharper point on the end. Okay, then we're going to come in and do another C curve. Maybe we'll change the shape of this one a bit. Okay, put a little bit of a point on that, like that. Maybe do another one here. This can be rounder, but we'll still change the thicknesses of them. Okay. Like that. That's a decent looking rose. Maybe you're happy with that. Maybe there's something about it that still bothers you. The thing that I see that can be an issue here is that the petals are all the same value. Where really, um, to just do a loose kind of rose with some depth, it should be darker in the center and lighter on the outside. I do want to point out that you also need to be making your C curves a little um, thicker as you go towards the outside, which we did here because we changed the shape. But see, these are almost all the same thickness all the way around. Okay, so here we changed the thickness of them as they went out, and we changed the shape of them. But it's kind of more of a graphic kind of style rose, almost like an illustration style, which can be nice, and it may be what you want. However, um, if you change the variation in the color or the value, you're going to get um, a softer kind of um, loose rose. Okay, so we'll start with the center, as always. I keep saying that. I don't even think I need to say that anymore because we're going to always start with the center. Okay, and I'm going to dip my brush in my water and come back and do the initial C curve. Another one here. Okay, another one here, I'm going to put a little bit of a pointier edge on that one, my petals are getting bigger and lighter as I work my way around. And you don't need to do your C curves in one stroke, okay? If you see that you want to adjust the shape of it, then go back in and put another stroke on there. It's perfectly okay. I like to make sure that I kind of wiggle that C curve in there to fill in a bit of white space between those petals, okay? As you see, as I did there. Ignore my neighbor's dog. Okay, but you can see we're getting lighter and lighter as we go towards the outside. Just like that. Okay, so now I am going to go into that darker pigment and just tap in a little extra pigment towards the center. Okay, and I'm going into my heavy mixture when I'm doing the center and as I move my way out, I will use like the wash that I created here. Okay, so it's a little bit lighter because I don't want that real vibrant color going against the lighter petals. And if you find that your petals have dried and this isn't kind of bleeding the way you want, you can easily fix that by just going in with the damp brush and kind of pushing that pigment around where you want it to go. Like here, that petal was a little too dry, so it's not really bleeding out. So I'm just going to clean off my brush, take off the excess water and kind of blend that out. Same there. You can do that anywhere. You can also push 
the pigment in to fill in some of the white space if you feel you've got a little too much white space. Okay, loose rose does not mean that you have to do it in one fell swoop. If there's things about it you don't like, go in and kind of touch them up. Okay, so that is making sure that you've got enough variation in tone in the petals that you're laying down. Now, the other thing I want to point out, this is more of a tip, really, is kind of, without overthinking it, kind of be aware of your petal placement. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to do a rose here. our C curve three okay I usually do three to get the rows started now when you go in to do your next row I'm going to be kind of careful about where I place them okay I don't want to step these petals I don't want to go pedal 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 I want to offset the petals okay so I'm going to start almost not not almost to the tip but past the center point of this C curve okay I'm gonna start it right here and I'm gonna come around and go not quite to the center of this petal that came before it and then when I do the next one I'm gonna start almost at the halfway point here not quite and I'm going to come around and not go to the half, not quite hit the halfway point on that petal that I had just put down before this one. Okay. And this one will start just at the tip there, but it's going to almost meet this petal over here. And then my next C curve can come right around and go way over there. And then this one, if I was to do a C curve here, it would it would be a step, a direct step from the from this one here. I hope this is making sense. So I'm going to start it over here. Okay, and then have it end there. Okay, so it's not stepped right from that one. It's kind of pushed up that way. I hope this makes sense. I'm going to add a little bit more pigment to this just so you can see it. Okay. So I don't want you, you know, going crazy thinking about this, but just try to keep it in mind so you can avoid those kind of stepped petals because they can make your rose look a little wonky if it's um stepping so obviously that it kind of looks like a pattern so that's that i didn't actually do the best job on that one but i hope you get what i'm trying to say there just to tap in a little extra pigment just so maybe it'll stand out a little better for you And some of these dried so the easy fix is to just go in with a damp brush Okay, so now let's just do one final rose, kind of addressing all the things we talked about. 
Okay, so we'll start with the squiggle in the middle. I'm not going to make this too big a rose. I'm just going to, I don't want to go crazy with it. We'll do our C curves. One. Two. And I'm just kind of keeping those things in mind as I do it. But I don't want to think about them so much that that I'm not, um, you know, ending up with a loose rose. You just want to make sure that it's good and loose. A little too much pigment on my brush there. Maybe make this one a little pointy so that the side, and I think I'll just do one more petal because I don't want to end up with this gigantic rose. Now I'm going to go in to my darker pigment and just add a little bit more tone in the center, just like that. Okay, and I'm just going to use a little bit of a lighter wash of it to add tone to the outside petals because I don't want these ones going really dark. Okay. I'm just going to soften this one up just a touch. And then let's throw some leaves on these just for fun. So for leaves, I'm just going to use, actually, you know what, I think I'm just going to put a little hint of a petal up here. There. Just because I can. So I'm going to take some sap green. We'll just throw some petals or petals, leaves in here just to finish it off. I like sap green and olive green. And we'll just do a couple of leaves coming off of here. I'm just doing leaves just so you can kind of see what they look like with some leaves, just for fun. I'm going to have one coming out of here, like so. Okay, and maybe one popping out of here a little bit. And maybe up here. Okay, just a little something. You can even deepen that up a bit just to put some little bit of variation on these leaves. And there you go. So if none of these things that I've pointed out are really your problem or you've addressed these but you're still not happy, um, we're going to take a look at another couple reasons why you may be having that problem. And it might be your brush, okay? So I used my Princeton Neptune. And you might be using something like a Princeton Snap, okay? And you can get some nice... Ro roses with the Prince and Snap. Of course, I used to just always use my Prince and Snap, but um, the bristles, as you see, I can bend them and they bounce right back. So they're rigid. Okay, so my Prince and Neptune, I bend those bristles and they don't snap back nearly as much. And it's a 
if you had it in your hand and you're feeling it, you would know you would know what I mean. It's just a way softer bristle. And that just means that you just get nice kind of flowy movement with your brush. Okay. The other thing is if you're holding your brush like a pencil or a pen or really tightly, which you may want to do for your centers, okay, because you're holding it and you're doing these kind of deliberate little squiggles, okay? But if you were to continue that hold while you did your C curves, you're kind of really tightening that grip and making it really kind of contrived, okay? So you are really have to be cautious and not cautious, you really have to be aware of the shape that you're painting. Okay, so try instead not to hold your brush so low on the handle, move it up higher on your brush and, le and lessen the grip on it, okay? So your brush is gonna have more, more movement and the, you're gonna rely on the movement of the brush rather than just always relying on the movement of your hand, okay? So you just get these kind of more organic, kind of flowy shapes. And it just lets your hand, it actually encourages you to paint more loosely, okay? So that would be my number one tip, really, if you're having trouble keeping it loose. It would be the grip on your brush. Also keep in mind, you could be struggling if you're trying to do a big rose and you're using a teeny brush. Um, so keep that in mind as well, okay? The, obviously the bigger the rose you're gonna do, the bigger the brush you're gonna need um, and vice versa. So there you go. There is my follow-up video on loose roses and um, addressing some issues that you may be having and how to solve them. So if you were struggling and you just weren't happy with your roses no matter what you did. I really hope some of this has helped you out. If you have any questions or comments or other concerns or issues, please let me know in the comment section below. And I wanna thank you so much for joining me and supporting my channel, I really appreciate it. That's it for today, take care and I'll see you next time.